Hey everybody! Today we're finally going to go ahead and play with the Anycubic Photon Printer. Don't go away. Hey gang, it's Paul from Fat Guy Productions coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And yes, indeed, today we're finally going to push past my fears, past my angst, and we are going to play with the Photon DLP resin printer. This should be a lot of fun, so let's just get right to it. I can't wait for this. All right, it is high time I get started using this uh, resin printer. And I have to say, I kind of was avoiding it a little bit. It was kind of intimidating. But in the end, um, the, the uh, resin didn't explode. Um, neither I nor my family are dead or, or poisoned. Um, and actually, the, the printer is really, really nice. There's a, there's a few extra steps you have to deal with here. But uh, I, I'm glad I finally got to, uh, working with this printer and put aside my fears. Okay, so I'm going to take you through my very first print uh, of the test print that they include with the printer. The first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to tension the FEP in the uh, resin vat because they don't come properly tensioned. So uh, what I would suggest is you get into your uh, favorite app store and you're gonna look for a uh, a program called Tuner T1 Tuner T1 and what you're gonna do is you're gonna start tightening the FEP uh, using the provided uh, Allen wrench until you get to about 350 uh, megahertz and uh, that should be about right and all you gotta do is just kinda stand it on its side and tap it with a stick uh, while the app is being aimed at it to listen to the sound. It's sort of like tuning a drum. And so you want to go about 350, 360 on that. So once you've got that done, we can go ahead and uh, get the rest of this set up and start doing a print. Okay, we're going to stick the build plate into the printer, but first you want to make sure it's nice and loose like this. Right here underneath the red... Uh, set uh, set knob you see that hole and there's the screw that allows this to wobble and that's what we want we want it to just swing freely you know don't unscrew that screw in the hole all the way just just turn it until it's loose okay so then we can go ahead and put the uh, build plate mechanism into the printer and tighten up the red knob leaving that nice and loose for us. Now, again, after checking our FEP and making sure it's tensioned properly, we're gonna go ahead and slide it into the, the printer. The little uh, pour knob we're gonna put in the uh, front right corner, and we're gonna slide it in carefully. We don't wanna be beating up our FEP, so we wanna do be very careful with it. And just kind of make sure it's pushed back fully against the stops, and then tighten the two little thumb screws down. Uh, make sure they're nice and secure, and so that the vat won't move. Okay, everything's set up. Now we just need to level the build plate. So we're going to turn the printer on and go to the movement screen. And under the Z movement, we're going to start to lower the build plate down into the resin vat. Now, you can start with large chunks and move it using the 10 millimeter movement setting. So you can set push the button for 10 millimeters and then go ahead and move down and the, the build plate will move down 10 millimeters. And we can keep doing that until the build plate has started to go inside the vat. As soon as that happens, switch over to the one millimeter setting and start to inch down closer to the screen. If we screw this up and go too far, we're gonna break our screen. So it's imperative to have your, your act together. Make sure you had your morning coffee here. So we're going to move down using the 10 millimeters, then we're going to inch closer using the 1 millimeters. And then when we're really close, we're going to change the setting to the 10th of a millimeter, and we're going to inch the rest of the way down. And what we're looking for here is the build plate should no longer be able to move around freely. I showed you how it just kind of swings around up there. 
Well, now what we want is we want just enough contact between the build plate and the FEP that the build plate no longer moves around easily. Okay? You should still be able to, if you really wanted to, you should be able to twist it a little bit. We don't want to do that, but you should be able to. Okay? But tapping it, bumping it, stuff like that, none of that should move it. Once we've got it making that contact, we can go ahead and lock that set screw in the top of the build plate down and lock the plate in position. Okay, so with the build plate flat against the FEP and unable to move freely, we can now go ahead and tighten it up with the provided Allen wrench. Snug it up first, then get your free hand in there and hold the head of the build plate so that you can apply counter pressure as you use the Allen wrench to really tighten this down tightly. You want to do it this way so you're not putting excess pressure on the Z rail. Okay, so we're going to get this really, really tight because if it's loose, the suction will pull your bed out of level and you'll have failed print after failed print. Okay, now before we go any further, we can go ahead and move the bed up just three tenths of a millimeter then we'll go to the zeroing screen and set that as a zero after that we can raise the plate up and make sure it's not wobbling it's not wiggly and we have leveled the build plate and zeroed it out okay so now let's go ahead and raise this way up out of the way so we can put resin into the vat and start printing. Here you can see a transition in the vat. This also serves as your fill line. So fill the vat to right about where that transition is. Don't overfill this sucker or it's going to overflow and you are going to rue the day. The thumb drive that comes with the printer blows, so we're going to replace it immediately with a good one, make an image of the original, and copy it onto your new thumb drive. I found that it works best if you insert the thumb drive with the printer off, then power it up. If you don't do it that way, sometimes it won't read the files. Now we can go into our menu and choose the print screen. And here on the top right, you can see our little test cube. So we'll touch it, and it'll give us a little display of it. Yep, that's what we want. Hit our play button, and it will begin to print. The first hour, hour and a half or so, really kind of sucks because you, you're so excited to see what's happening and you can't see anything. All you know is you hear these weird snapping noises, all sorts of stuff, and you're freaking out that everything is going wrong, and it's just kind of a very tense moment. But eventually, the, the printer will get high enough, and you'll start to be able to get a little peek underneath there. A little peek, see? And there you can see your print starting to come out. And that's when you know you're on to something. Now we can get a really good look at our print and everything it looks like it's going fine and I can't wait for it to get all the way out of the liquid, warm liquid goo phase so that we can really see what's happening. I'm really stoked at this point, I gotta tell you. The uh, screen on the front of the printer will tell you how far along you are so you have an idea that, oh, there it is, the last pass. Yep, once it's done, it will withdraw out of the warm liquid goo, pulling out your model in the most beautiful and dramatic fashion. And at about this point, you're high-fiving and doing a little happy dance because everything looks amazing and you're super, super excited. You have printed a 3D model with the, your resin printer and you frankly didn't die. So I think that's always a plus. So let's go ahead and clean this and cure it.
Okay, hopefully you have your cleaning station ready. And if you do, just loosen the red knob at the top and remove the build plate. Head on over to your vat of isopropyl alcohol and go ahead and remove the, the model from the build plate, which is easier said than done. Uh, these things stick like the dickens, I gotta tell you. And, you know, being my first, I didn't really understand how to get it off. So I have a fairly sharp metal uh, scraper, and that wasn't doing the trick. So uh, it ended up being just sheer impact. And uh, eventually I knock it off, and you can see it goes shooting into the alcohol there. But this resin is some pretty sturdy stuff, so it didn't do any damage. So now I'm just going to kind of rinse off my, uh, my scraper, and I'll put aside the... Uh, the build plate and basically I just hung it back into the printer so it can drip down into the vat without causing any damage and now I'll break out a handy dandy little toothbrush and I'm gonna give this a good overall scrubbing and get off as much of the residual resin as I can After we're done with the uh, bath and the alcohol, I can go ahead and rinse it off in some water. I have a, a water tub right next to this one. And then we can go ahead and cure this in UV light. Uh, for my curing, I'm going to be using a fingernail uh, curing lamp that you can get on Amazon, and I'll put a link in this video. But you can also just stick this sucker out in the sun, and that will do just as good a job. And i got to tell you, right about now, you will be smiling ear to ear because this thing is amazing and this printer is a lot of fun. Well, there you have it. It is perfect. I cannot believe this was my very first print and it came out amazing. This thing is just fascinating to look at that there's text down here says 35 millimeters I don't know what it's trying to tell me there but there's text there inside of it it says any cubic photon and it's got the little cage and stuff and it's 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 just like I mean this thing is amazing I I'm blown away and and coming from an uh, a relatively short but coming from an FDM printer background this thing just blows my mind, okay? I, I cannot believe it. I'm so glad that this did not fail. There was times there in the print I was concerned about it, but man, this thing came out like a champ. It was amazing. It was fun. And I am just so excited about this printer. So what am I telling you? I'm telling you that this thing puts amazing quality out, and it's not as bad as some of the horror stories. Okay, I've got the lung issue. You guys know about that. I don't smell the resin. I've got resin in the vat right now, okay, from, from printing this. So I've got resin in the vat. I'm not smelling it at all, okay? I'm not choking. I'm not coughing. And let me tell you something, everything triggers me, okay? But nothing is bothering me right now. Um... It wasn't that big a deal. If you do a little research, you know, have the right equipment, have a, a good size cleaning area, you know, have everything you need for doing that. Have the printer set up, have some resin, have a plan, you know, do a little research, do a little homework. You're going to be just fine. And man, you're going to be amazed at the result. The only negative I would say is that after curing, this isn't as glossy and shiny as, and transparent as it is when it comes right out of the resin and it's all wet. It looks amazing then. And as, as amazing as it looks still now, um, I just wish it would maintain that look. Now, I have heard that if you cure this underwater, that it will keep that look. Okay, it's got something to do with being able to release oxygen or something like that, or bring in oxygen, I don't know, but, so the next time I print something, I'm going to try that, and just see what happens, 
but I wish this stuff was a little clearer, more transparent when it comes out. Um, there's a lot of things out there you can do, and I'll be experimenting with all of those, I'm relatively sure. Okay, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, click the bell to be notified anytime I release a new video. Ask any questions and make any comments that you want down below. I love to hear from you guys. Chatting with you is the highlight of my day. Okay, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions. I'm going to get out of here. Until next time, I hope you have a super califragilistic, expialidocious, wonderful type day. And until next time, be good.